Remy, welcome to the podcast. Thank you so we'll much. We'll do a formal introduction. Okay. But like, I wanted to get this out of the way because this is just what I've been dealing with for the past few days. And okay. I don't know if you know about uh, this about me. I have like battled with psoriasis in oh. my past. I get this, I have this condition called gutate psoriasis, which is a, um, a form of psoriasis. Only like less than a third of people who have it um, battle with it. Um, and it's brought on after you have strep throat, you have an outbreak of psoriasis. And this has only happened like two times in my life. One time when I was in college and then one time in 2019 after Coachella, I got strep throat and had a bad outbreak and it, la- like it ruined my summer. It like, just kicks you when you're already down. Yes. It, it becomes completely inflamed. It almost Aww. looks like chicken pox like really splotchy chicken pox and so i had a sore throat about two three weeks ago and i didn't think anything of it i got out of the shower last friday and i was having an outbreak and i got really scared because the big thing is the medication i need is Cumera or Consentix. Oh, yeah. You see commercials for it yeah. all the time people who have crohn's yeah. and um, a lot of autoimmune disorders and the thing is, it takes forever to get the medication approved. Oh, no. And I got it approved on Friday. So I had to give myself a shot. Oh. And I'm in the process of it. But it seems to be getting better. But I hope it doesn't get worse. Matt also last time talked about this on, on podcasts. And he's become like sort of a de facto advocate for <laughs> people with this type of psoriasis. The so he, of- he wants to make sure he gets the... I like sharing my journey because a lot of um, people out there have heard me talk about it. And they're very interested in how I'm doing. Oh, and, yeah. you know, and obviously on my own podcast, I'm interviewing people. So I never get to speak my truth. No, I'm glad. I'm so happy that I could be here to hear this. But Holy shit. That's how bad it gets. Oh. So I'm trying to swerve that. So (gasps) if you can put out the energy, your thoughts and prayers to the healing of my psoriasis. My main question, were you walking around with strep for three weeks? Two, like, no, no, no. Okay. The strep lasted, I think, for like a few days. Oh. It just comes up like a couple weeks after you have strep. Oh. Strep. That's, okay. So, okay. so my body thinks it's still fighting something that isn't there. Oh my gosh. So that's so it's sad. autoimmune system. So thank you for I'm listening. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I really am. All right. Well, let's give a proper introduction. Howdy, howdy, folks. Welcome back to Hoot and a Half. I'm your host, Matt King. I'm Mike Sheffer. And today we are joined with Remy Cruz. Hello. A top tier internet personality and entrepreneur. You may know her uh, as a co-host of Pretty Basic with her and Alicia mm-hmm. uh, Marie. And I'm so happy to have you on. I'm so happy to be here. I would like to just uh, tell everybody that Alicia has not been to the world's largest, biggest, biggest cup. I have. Oh, wow. Okay. I watched the podcast. I was really upset. She also didn't give me a shout out. She didn't know it existed (laughs) until I told her about it. I went to school where she grew up. She never knew about the cup. I would visit it once a week, just sit there and look at it. at the cup. Yeah, just look at the cup. It's magnificent. Wow, well, we, so, all need, we need to go with her to, to, see, to, it. to see it. Because yes. you're the experienced yes. one. You'll know all the history. I'll Google all the fun facts. Can mm-hmm. you give us some some feedback of what it's like at the cup? Some, um, some live experiences? Breathtaking. I'm honestly like left speechless every time. <laughs> it's not the Dixie Factory. I'm pretty sure it's like an off-brand, like, Inland Empire Riverside Cup Factory. Oh, it's not the Dixie no, Cup No, it's just factory. a big-ass cup. I think There's I made, not much made, going on. made that part up. Okay. I, I tried to do myself. a little bit of research about you in, like, Anaheim. But it's, like, it's <laughs> Anaheim. I like, know. Anaheim is, like, one of the most visited places by all the tourists in California. Yeah. Did you like growing up in Anaheim? I did. So, I grew up in Anaheim Hills, which is, like, a pocket of anaheim it's like this really suburban part of it um but disneyland was amazing like i you know how like when you're a kid you get dropped off at the mall or something by your parents like our parents just drop us off at disneyland be like have fun bye we'll pick you up in like five hours that was that was your weekend hangouts like after school all the time but but then passes were also way less expensive so they would just buy us a pass and then drop us off there and it was really fun it is crazy how expensive it's getting at disneyland no like i don't even want to go now no and the lines are so long, and now you have to like cue everything. It's like the damn Titanic. Like they, like the wealthy get like treated the best <laughs> at at uh, Disneyland, and then uh, the rest have to fend for themselves. There's for like real? a feudal a feudal system there, a, a hierarchy of what your status is of Disney yeah, adults. Pretty much. Have <laughs> you ever been into what's the club called? Like clubs? No, 30, 30, 33? 33, I think yeah. it is. Yeah, no, I've never. Oh damn. I also don't really like. I'm a Disney adult, but like not. 
really yeah. like on a scale like one to ten i'm like a three yeah you're just like you're very experienced exactly. you, you know your way around disneyland i actually have a question about disneyland with you because i think i saw it in one of your vlogs you Ooh. mentioned that you walked around disneyland for an entire day with glass in your i was just gonna tell you foot? this fun story yes so i i don't know how this happened but i went i took alicia and my best friend ollie to disneyland in the middle of like when they were doing the trams were not working because of covid so you had to walk from the parking lot and i remember beginning the walk and i was like damn i'm really out of shape my foot's like really hurting but i was like that's okay and then i maybe made it like three hours in and at one point i couldn't put any more weight on my foot and i was like i'm so out of shape this is so <laughs> embarrassing and so i made us end up leaving like really early because i was so in so much pain, but I didn't know why. Finally, I was telling one of my friends, like, oh my God, my foot is killing me. I don't know what's going on. She's like, oh, you probably have something stuck in it. So she cut my foot open and <gasps> took the glass out. She like was, oh my God, it was so painful. You were able to like identify the exact spot where like the pain it was, was coming like from. It was a couple, like a couple inches by a couple inches. So she was just kind of like digging in my foot. <gasps> it was not like disinfectant. It was like, it was not safe whatsoever. Yeah, yeah she's not a qualified surgeon by no, any means. Absolutely you, you, didn't have a, you didn't have a real podiatrist mm -mm. operating. Okay. Unfortunately, no. Just um, the, the scissors from the junk drawer and... Absolutely. No no infection though, so that's great. Oh and, my god. Uh, we, she was digging around and then ended up finding it was a microscopic piece of glass. But you know how like the princess and the pea, like yes. you, could, you could feel it? Oh, yeah. I don't know what would have happened if it like had stayed in, but my foot had grown over it. Like I've my heard skin about covered it. I've heard about people, yeah, who've had glass, you know, get into their body and they forget about it and then it heals up and mm -hmm. then it goes even further into your body. Oh my god. I had I had glass in one of uh uh one of my foot my feet. <laughs> one of my foot. <laughs> I had glass in my foot <laughs> and it was it was like a shard of glass, but it was really <gasps> long and really thin. And I walked around with it for like two days. Right. And then I finally was like, something's here. But the way I found it is I would, like, sh put it in the light to see where it was shining, and I could see, like, the tip of it. Ew. And I extracted it. And then one time, I had a friend. I had my old roommate. They were pre-gaming, and they were deciding if they should really go out for the night or just call it a night and just do a pre-game. Uh -huh. And they decided they were going to flip a coin. And if it was heads or tails, they were going to go out. And it landed on heads. They were going to go out. He got so excited, and he was in the kitchen, and they had... Like, you know, wine glasses. You know you can hang them upside down yeah. above, like, your sink. He went, hell yeah, and <gasps> raised his arm. <laughs> and the glass shattered into his, um, just, like, the crux of his elbow. And then went to the hospital. Oh they took God. out as much glass as they could. But they said, we can see if there's glass deeper in there, but you have to get an x-ray. He didn't have health insurance. So he said, I'll just deal with it. Stitch me up. Then six months go by. We're in Vegas. Oh. And he's like, dude, my elbow is killing me. And it had become this really thick scar. <laughs> and, he, and he starts touching it. And he goes, do you feel that? <laughs> and we're all, we're all like pinching it. And we go, something really hard is in there. And it was the glass. Oh. And so then he starts flexing and flexing. And the <gasps> glass starts coming through. And we're like, I go, we have to go to the hospital. Or I'm like, don't pick it out. You're going to ruin our Vegas trip. Yeah. He goes, no, let's do it. And we <gasps> operated drunk in a, in a <laughs> the hotel drunk. room the drunk. pulling out the glass. <laughs> and you pulled it out successfully? Yes. Oh, my so God. So his body had, like, rejected it and was, like, pushing it out? Pushing it out. Whoa. And it was, like, it was probably as I want to say as big as a penny, it's, maybe even a oh, little that's smaller. Actually really big. It was huge. Oh my god! I was worried we were gonna like catch an artery, and it was just gonna yeah. turn into <laughs> downhill from there. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, a mess. Well, okay, enough glass talk. <laughs> um, it's a special day for you. It's your dog's birthday. Oh my god! Yes, thank Daisy. you for talking about it. Yes, she's eight. <laughs> eight it's a big years day. Old. Yeah. How are you celebrating? Okay, I'm a really bad dog mom, and I kind of like I forget usually, and then by the time that I remember, it's like kind of over so this year i really try to stay on top of it i'm gonna go pick up a cake after this and then that'll be it a, like dog? a dog cake a dog cake there's a dog bakery What's, right down the street i love it what dog what bakery um a barkery i think it's called three dog maybe it is a barkery i think it's called three dog or something like that cute well, so the, we'll see the good news is that your dog has no idea yeah. that you've been missing its birthday every year so Absolutely. you're totally in the clear you can make it up any day of the week so. i really could yeah you're right I, I, would you ever like taste it to see if it's like good enough no, but she does eat these like chicken treats and her food is human grade. And sometimes I'm like, 
<laughs> if I needed. Sometimes, if I absolutely had to. Now there's all these like chic new like dog snacks where you can't even tell that it's like dog treats on the bag. No. Like one oh, of no. the like first times or I was with my like girlfriend's like family and we're all hanging out. We're at this like beach house and there was like another family there. And you know, you when I'm kind of like a nervous person where I need to stay busy. Like yeah. I'm like, oh I'll, I'll consume a lot of snacks while I'm talking to you. <laughs> and I saw this snack of like these little cheesy bites and I thought like oh i'm gonna those look good and i'm eating them i'm like these kind of suck but i think <laughs> but i thought they were like vegan or like super healthy and then one of the girls comes in she goes are you eating those i ate like half the bag she goes those are my dog treats but i was mad about the packaging goes, there's not a dog on here oh wow. there was like a little play on words like like maybe bark bites or right, something right. and i didn't think anything of it did you start barking the rest of the night did you start turning into a dog no but tail. i did feel like i caught some fleas I don't know. <laughs> um yeah very strange but like dog food though you can eat though right i mean yeah i think you can eat anything you people eat cat food sometimes i think that's a thing Ooh. but my dog treats are like just chicken it's just dehydrated chicken oh. so i could munch on it if i wanted to i just don't want to but if push came to shove I, I I'll take, let you know. Take a bite. Oh, and they smell kind of good. <laughs> they really do. I think about it. And you just got back from Vegas. I did. I did Coachella weekend one, Coachella weekend two, stagecoach to Vegas. Nonstop. Nonstop, baby. Now this was a Vegas trip that because Cal, your boyfriend, yes, who I love, Mike. Have you met Cal? I have not. He hasn't met Cal, but Cal would love you. And Cal was very upset that I wasn't. Or he's he's not man. here today. Okay, he's, he's the man. great. He's very great guy. cool. And Excited to meet him. Yes. And but Cal's birthday like fell during Coachella. Yes. And so you decided to do a surprise. Well, no, it wasn't a surprise trip, but you had some surprises. You really did your research. I caught yes. up on some vlogs. <laughs> and I gotta say, I love your vlogs. You they're, so so, they're so fun. And we went to Vegas and watched Silk Sonic and that was it. Hey! And you surprised him with a oh, the room at uh, the, the Cosmo. Cosmo. Yes. It was, was beautiful. Did you end up using that hot tub? Once. <laughs> but he ended up getting kind of sick while we were there, so I was just kind of in there alone. Oh, no! It's okay. It's okay. It was a great time. Silk Sonic was fantastic. I went... Do you know who Silk Sonic is? Yeah, Silk Sonic is Bruno Mars and Anderson Park. Yes, yes. So we went to the first show, which was Friday, and they did this one move where they started gyrating, and I was like... <gasps> I need to come back and see that again. So I booked <laughs> tickets for the next night. I went back again. Oh, just to see it one dance Just move. to see one single dance move. I was wow. like, I was so moved by the gyrating. Is, I it, went a, back. is it a residency they're doing? Or? Yes. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. we Did you get it on film? No, because they take your phone. They oh. treat it like a Disney movie premiere. They put your phone in those locked pockets. That's ridiculous. I know. But I really got to experience it. Yeah. And, and you knew it was coming. So you were like, okay, engage, watch. pay attention. Exactly. Yeah. Make eye contact. <laughs> it was fantastic. I highly recommend. Uh, yeah, we saw Anderson Pock at the uh, the Rolling Stone party. Yes. You weren't there. I wasn't there because Cal got sick. Oh, damn. Yeah. Well, he was crying. Did you do any gambling in Vegas? I did. I lost a lot. I lose money, so much money every time. How, how much money are we talking about? Probably like three grand. Three? Oh my Ooh. gosh! What games are you playing? Blackjack. <laughs> Blackjack is a that's that's my game too. I get like with any game, Mario Kart, gambling, Animal Crossing. <laughs> I just reach a point after about ten minutes where my attention span it, like can't take it anymore. So then I just start max betting to just be done. Yeah. Like, but I go into it. No, I'm like, oh, I'm gonna lose this. It's fine. Just keep going. Just keep. And then it's over, and I'm like, oh my god, what did I just do? I black out. <laughs> did you take three grand out initially, going, this is what I'm spending, or were you making multiple trips <laughs> multiple back, trips. trying to work your way exactly. back up to uh, ground level? I give myself like a daily allotted amount. Uh, but that's actually way dumber because of the fee with the ATM. The oh. charge like fifty bucks. But after a few drinks, you're dollars? like, I don't care. Oh, Pay for the sure, fee. <laughs> exactly. I'll win it back, and then I won nothing. Oh yeah, Mike. ATMs in Las Vegas are fifty dollars to pull your no, cash out. It's like 15. They do like, yeah, they do a quite a bit. But $15 if, ATM? Yeah. ATM fee. Oh. I was complaining last night for a $3 ATM fee. I was like, this is a highway robbery. <laughs> it is in, it is unbelievable. Like, $15? It's 15. expensive. But you know, that's, you got to get your cash That's my out. money, but it's my money. Why am I paying some some silly box? To, I'm, You're I'm gonna, a good Jew. Because like, they know they can. That's the thing. And they'll get you. I, I got Mike to finally gamble for the first time. <gasps> oh, God. I hated it. But you... <laughs> Tell them what happened. Oh, well, I did win, okay. which was great. We then went why to the. We uh, well, just because it feels like I would be doing what you would do is okay. Let's just lose everything as quickly as possible. But, okay. Um, where were we in Ta uh, Tahoe. Lake Tahoe? Yeah. Why but were we, we there? went over to like Reno. We were there for the, the MTV thing. The MTV hosting thing. Well, yeah. there was like one 
slot machine. It was Willie Nelson's like road show or something. I put in five dollars, then I ended up winning like ninety three dollars, and I that's it. It's the it, only thing I did. No, I put my money in. You also went to roulette, and I did said, I? and I go just put twenty on red. And you did it. And I lost it. No, you won it. I won roulette. And you okay. like hated it. You were like, I just doubled my money. Go, yeah. That's gambling, Mike. You I like it. blocked it out because I don't want to. It's I, yours to keep. And I don't like, understand how you could hate it. I really don't. Because I just see so many people losing money all the time. Anytime you go into a casino, I just see those people like dead-eyed just putting the quarter That's into the me. machine. Yeah. And just losing money for over and over and over. And I'm just like, I work so hard for money. Like everybody works hard for money. Why would I give it? to a casino and I just I don't understand it I so I think I, I blacked out these these victories so I wouldn't be <laughs> tempted to go back in and do it I love it when I'm <laughs> able to at least pay for the trip that I'm on by with, winning with at my the casino winning. absolutely I, I went uh, on a cruise ship a cruise ship to Alaska <gasps> and I won about like 800 to a thousand bucks and that paid for my trip just doing blackjack every night do you ever win at gambling no i have never won ever <laughs> and i'm really big on slots which i know is the worst thing it's literally programmed to make just take your money but I'm, i in my head i'm like i will win the jackpot like i oh, I, I, get, I will yeah i, I get know. Anxi- i get anxiety when i like get a lottery ticket because i think i'm going to win like that that week i'm like oh i gotta be ready How for friday because i'm gonna win <laughs> Just need to be prepared for uh, the day for it to change. <laughs> Gotta get a haircut for the news segment. <laughs> uh-huh. it, it, and I'm addicted to like TikToks of people at slot machines. Like just them. You are? R- uh, yes. Me too. I like, watch that to the end. I'm like, what am I doing? Just- I was watching a guy filming it. I just stood there watching it for like 20 minutes. He was just like live streaming himself playing slots. Yeah. Or sometimes I like to treat my gambling winnings as if I'm at like a Chuck E. Cheese. So if you win a bunch of money, go spend it and buy yourself like a nice jacket. You know? For so sure. you don't need to make that part of your like income. Right. Is yeah. with the right. Winnings. Go get a prize with your winnings. It's free money. Yeah. That's what it is. Do, and like have you ever played poker in Vegas though? No. Because I couldn't imagine playing with strangers, like against them and like bluffing. Oh, is that I honestly like, have no idea what poker is, honestly. <laughs> yeah, poker you're playing against okay. people. Like you're not playing against the dealer like blackjack. <gasps> oh my god! So you're playing against other people, and a lot of what poker is is reading if these people are bluffing the or they're saying face, what yes. they have or not. And yeah, doing that with strangers is probably really tough. Sometimes if you're playing with friends, you could be like, "You're fucking, bull- you're full of shit." I know you have nothing, and then you can pay- bet against them. But going up against Vegas pros, I-, I can't imagine. Yeah, that's a good point. Did you stay at the same table the whole time, or are you switching it up? Oh, I don't go to the table either. I do the virtual version. With like the fake dealer, like no, te- you're not I doing think that. That's why I lose. I think that's why you lose. I know. You play blackjack <laughs> against a computer. Yeah, you know, Wait. like they have like a like an automatic like a like a TV version where you're playing against like someone. I know. They no, always I have know, that, but, like that hot girl who's yes, just like, and they're like green screen cards. Blackjack anyone? Like they're they're all like fake. Yes. I think that's your problem. No, I know, but like <laughs> if I go to the table, I get so embarrassed because I take a long time, uh, and I'm uh, like, they're I'm, they're I'm gonna judge me. You know exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I have to use my fingers to count. So like that's why I use the machine. You know who's really good um, to go sit and play blackjack with is Corinna Kampf. Really? She used to be a blackjack dealer, like a private blackjack dealer for like parties and stuff when she was younger. Oh my god! And she is the best because I go, what should I do? And Corinna will just bring in money for y'all. Because there are best practices of blackjack. It's kind of just like if you have this, do this. If you have this, do this. Yeah. And it, it's a lot of times just doing the right thing. Sometimes the dealers, I think, will even tell you like. If you don't know, I mean, maybe some tables not, but I've been, I've like seen people play Jack Deck and the dealer will be like, okay, when you have 16, you can do this or you can do this. What do you oh, want to do? And the dealers will like help them. Yeah. Maybe mm, find like a, you know, a, nice a low stakes table, maybe like an older, you know, <laughs> slow, slower paced dealer. It's <laughs> a good idea. We'll be right back after a quick word from today's sponsor, Evite. Matt, it's party time. That's right, Mike. I love a good shindig. I love a good soiree. I love when a party is so perfectly put together, everything from the invite to the event itself. And I have a birthday coming up. We I've both pl- do. Yes, that's right. Yes. And we've been thinking about how we how we should do it, how we should celebrate. And we want everybody to be as excited about our party as we are. And that's why we use Evite. Evite offers thousands of free invitation options, fully customizable for all occasions. Birthdays, weddings. 
weddings, baby showers, whatever you're celebrating virtually or in person. There are thousands of invitation templates created by their community of professional artists to choose from, or you can upload your own unique design. Matt, I know you have a little bit of an artistic flair, so when Matt throws parties, it's always a Matt King inspiration. Sometimes I like to go in and check out maybe the pool party templates, and that's what we use when, when we throw parties at Mike Sheffer's house. And the templates make it so easy, fun, and simple to create an invitation so everything that you're celebrating is extra special. And to really step up your invites, you need to check out premium invitations. And it takes just a few minutes to create and send invitations to everyone on your guest list. Plus, RSVP tracking is included, and you can link an Amazon or Target gift registry to your invite for your guests to use too. So if you're not planning an event or a party, but have one to attend, Evite offers amazingly designed greeting cards that you can send. And anytime we use Evite, it's extremely easy to use. It takes the stress out of creating invitations for a party. You don't want to have to manage text messages and just a boring old list of data. You want to make a custom, beautiful invitation to set the mood, set the tone, and let people know what you're throwing down. And parties are stressful. Even when it's not my own and I hear people talking about it and they don't know how they're going to get the invites out or how they're going to plan their guest list, I always recommend Evite and it makes the planning such a breeze. So Evite is making our birthday party planning even more fun and exciting and extra special. And they can do the same for all your celebrations too. So head over to evite.com slash hoot to choose from thousands of design options and create and send invitations for free. That's E-V-I-T-E dot com slash hoot H-O-O-T, evite.com slash hoot. And now back to the episode. Um, I, I did have a question about something you said before. Four, three music festivals and then a Vegas weekend. Oh, yes. How are you awake? <laughs> How are you alive? <laughs> What's your secret? What is, what is going on here? A lot of Red Bull, a okay. lot of liquid IV. Those truly got me through. You have like a liquid IV like intermission throughout like oh. all your vlogs. You're like, I... I... <laughs> She has like a nice cocktail. She goes, but I'm adding some liquid IV in it. That's what I do. I drink only Tito's because any other alcohol makes me absolutely throw up. Okay. Like ferociously. So I drink only vodka, specifically Tito's, water, and then I add crystallite or liquid IV to it, and then I'm golden. So you're drinking <laughs> Tito's on yes. the rocks with a splash of liquid IV and... And water. Not and... on the rocks. A little water, okay. diluted a bit, and then I'm just chugging all night. Do you, do you go take water breaks at all in between or does the water in the drink like help the hydration a little bit um not as much as i should but the water helps i usually don't have hangover well, mm, <laughs> this past month i haven't had a hangover once surprisingly wow. and are you getting shit faced or you're just like having a sip of pretty drunk yeah okay <laughs> drunk. You're, oh. get, you're getting after it you're yeah. not just having one cocktail and calling yeah. it a day no i wish but no. okay i don't drink liquor at all most of it i'll have a margarita but I never ha getting a cocktail. <gasps> One, I hate how long it takes to get a cocktail. <laughs> and you got to tip more with a cocktail. Okay. And I just want to get served. And I just know that I don't get hungover when I um, have cocktails. And I say no to shots. I hate shots. I don't do shots. I did shots all the time in college. And I real realized as an adult, you can have boundaries. <laughs> you, can <say> <laughs> you can't say no. Say no. Go, no, I'll pass. You cannot make me take that shot. Yeah. Because when I take a shot, I also like gasp and i have like this gulp of air that goes down in my stomach and it's just unsettling I the can't. entire time all right well I'd, I'd like to continue understanding the remy plan for surviving weekends because okay. i like I, I you know as you get older it gets a lot tougher so <laughs> are we are we sleeping like taking naps during the day are we doing blackout curtains are you using just give me the whole regimen for how we get through how, how do you get to, to stagecoach after two coach Coachella weekends? I will say I learned, okay, this is what I've learned in my past month of this experience. I would go later in the day to the festival because if you're there, there are a couple times I had to go do brand deals. So I was there like in the hot sun in the middle of the day, which was not the best. Yeah. But if you go a little later, it's a lot more easy to just like take it all on. And then also I wouldn't drink till 6 p.m. If you just wait yes. till then, no then I can go drinking. hard. Exactly. Okay. I can't like I can't do a Vegas pool party and then a nightclub. Like I've never been able to do both. I'm not like one of those people. It's one or the other. Mm -hmm. Oh, so I, I keep track of some people like 
because it was a lot of our group's uh, first time going to Coachella, the pre-games, people were getting burnt out fast. Mm-hmm. I'm like, they ain't going to make it. Mm-hmm. And sure enough, like Tristan, Patricia's roommate and co-host, <laughs> he did not make it. He didn't make it like every single day. Oh. But he still went for stagecoach. To so. the festival? He didn't make no, it? No, like he just didn't make it to like the final act. Who oh, are we talking gotcha. about? Tristan. Oh, I love Tristan I so know, much. Oh my God, so I love Tristan. <laughs> but like, at one point, he had his like headphones in at Coachella, like listening to music in his own <laughs> world. That's how zonked he was. Um, but it was adorable though. Like, but I never. I don't want to. What is the it. What is the food situation when you're at these festivals? Are you eating healthy? Or are you not just not eating? Like, what is the? Because I feel like when you have a lot of alcohol, you kind of want to. Some people say you got to eat the greasy foods. Uh... I'm not really good with alcohol. Like, I get so hungover from like three beers. Really? So it is very impressive to me that you can go to a Coachella weekend and then another one and then stagecoach <laughs> and then Vegas and come here and just be like. Hello, I'm here. <laughs> I, I will would, say, yeah. the days in between, I was doing absolutely nothing. Like, okay. you come back on a Monday, and then Monday to Thursday, I would not move. Just marinating. So that was my recovery process. Okay. Um, Food-wise, you need to eat. Otherwise, you're going to black out, or you're going to get sick. So I would say something, like, lighter, though, so I don't feel like... Mm, yucky right but yeah, they had these like little rice ball things they were like almost like hand oh, handheld I, sushi balls yes so good that I kept s- me going damn mm-hmm. i mean uh, that's uh, i couldn't the thing is at coachella there's all these like really cool f- uh food places that you really want to try but i don't want to wait in line yeah. i'm just going like, what is the shortest line it's like a hot dog i'm like give it to me take it down i need to go meet up with everybody absolutely. else absolutely also, what was really cool about Coachella, and I'm so glad I watched this moment, you got featured in uh, Vogue Singapore for yes. one of the best dress outfits. Yes. And we met up at y'all's place for the pregame, mm-hmm. and it was great. Your place was awesome. Thank the you. group was great. Y'all's pregame, your house, was one of my favorite ones that I saw the entire weekend. Really? And it was so cool because they were, um, I don't know how the moment happened, but just everyone was screaming and everyone was hovering over a laptop. And uh, Remy got featured in Vogue. And that was really cool for you and your friend Jesse who yes. took the photo. Yes. I was in the bathroom peeing. And then my stylist texted me and was like, oh, my God, you're in Vogue. Oh, my God. And so then I ran out of the bathroom. Jesse happened to be working on the laptop. And I was so excited for him because this photo, I've been working with Jesse for, like, years since he was in college. And I ran and was like, oh, my God. And then more so sharing the moment with him. But then everyone happened to be there. I didn't even know you were there. And I looked up and you were screaming. I was like, oh, shit, Matt King's here. And everyone was cheering. And it was like such a fun moment that was also on video. So Was that part of your goal going into Coachella? You're like, I want to get featured on the best Oh, dress. absolutely not. I also was wearing assless chaps. Like, I was so fucking scared. I had a breakdown before I went being like, oh, my God, everyone's going to make fun of me. We all know the assless chaps thing with Coachella and, like, all that kind of stuff. But I was like, you know what? Everyone, like, Alicia called me. She's like just fucking wear it like it's fine it's their pants it's fine you're gonna have a good time and i was like okay and so when i put them on and then that happened i was like oh th- just thank god i know thank i feel god. like when i saw you the first day i didn't even have a moment to take in your dress because you came to the rescue when patricia's outfit had oh co- gosh, like the yes. zipper had completely popped off That's and we had to right. diy with like <laughs> zip ties you guys have been performing a lot of surgeries on, yeah, in the yeah, field for real. <laughs> You know, no problems, only solutions. Yeah. Okay, you were that's... doing great though. You were like, I love that Patricia was like, mm, and you were like, oh my god, like <laughs> freaking out. It was so cute. But it, we made it like a look. I thought she was actually going to get featured for just this <laughs> brand new look with like a uh, bandana wrapped around yes. the back. Um, but thank you for being there. That we really did appreciate Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Let's day. talk about Cal, your boyfriend. Okay. We love Cal. Um, he's just uh, my go-to whenever we see each other yes. at events that you're at too. Um, I gotta say, Cal's fit. He is really good fit. Are you like a brain behind that, or is he um, making those choices for himself? Coachella, or just in general? Just well, I get. I think just in general, like oh. in Vegas, he was rocking really great fits. That's Coachella, so it was awesome. Coachella, fully styled by me. Okay, he had no <laughs> say in anything he wore. I made him match me. I we did a fitting before, and then that was it. So I'm taking full credit for that. But everything <laughs> else, he like. The style evolution of Cal. We're about to hit our three-year anniversary in like a couple months. You guys should have seen what he used to wear when we first started dating. He had this horrific, I never let him forget it, horrific, like a uh, nautical looking, navy blue and white, horizontal striped. Think of like a hoodie, but then cut the, the sleeves off. It was oh, a no. vest with a hood. He'd wear it all the time. <laughs> he also doesn't go out in the sun, so he's like 
like reflective way it's scary <laughs> it's actually scary i'm not even kidding and so then i remember telling my aunt like oh my god i i really don't like some of the clothes that he wears and she's like oh just do what i do with your uncle you just like fold them away you tuck them like <laughs> in in like in a corner where they won't see and then like slowly slowly they just start getting donated uh-huh. slowly one by one so that's what i started doing until he has a, he had a full new wardrobe how long into the relationship was this uh, a couple months <laughs> <laughs> a few months in i'd say especially once we moved in then it made things a lot easier and uh now he's got a full new wardrobe he's he, he will even say like thank you so much for helping my style now and he has great taste i would say that's great i, I i'm like that with mike sometimes what <laughs> Oh, yeah, asking me what I'm wearing and telling me not to wear it. Well, I I think last summer I was like, okay, this shirt has to go. There's this one tank top I really like that's like yellow and like has like a weird Aztec print on it. Like, you know, there's just those ones that were big from like 2006. And I even called you out and go, let me guess, you've had that tank top, Mike, for about eight years. With this Coles cash. cash. He's like, yeah, I have to go. It, you're never wearing no, this fa- again. Fashion for me is always if it if it's comfortable, I'm wearing it. I, I don't. Get that. I can't tell if it looks good or not. I just know if it f- if it like feels good and fits good. And if it's free, and even, if it's free, oh yeah, oh for sure. Take... If you make merch and if you give Mike that merch, he'll rock <laughs> he'll it. Like, oh yeah, I'm gonna send you some of my merch. Oh please, <laughs> oh, yes. he'll never that'll be say... my summer collection. <laughs> okay, sounds good. It says drama queen, but it'll be free. So that's oh yeah, okay. <laughs> I'm, I'll take anything. Okay. I, I love free clothes. I also love Cal's like he has really good bags. Oh, he's really into a bag. He like I forget exactly when it started, but at some point someone gave him a bag. He started wearing it, and then he I remember he was just like, "Why doesn't everyone wear bags? Like this is just hands free. Uh-huh. I've always got my stuff now, so now he always wears a bag, and he loves like dressing him up, dressing him down." Yeah, I I feel like though if I wore a bag, Patricia would just use it as extra storage. That's like, what I do. Stuff she can't <laughs> oh, fit. Sure. She goes here. You take this. You take this, yes. and just keep that all on for me. Um, <laughs> how did you and Cal meet? Hinge. Hinge. Mm-hmm. And well, now with Hinge, you got the prompts. Yes. Do you remember what, if, which prompts? Yes. Or who, did one of you respond to the other? I re- he responded to, or I liked him first, but okay. I have a really big thing, or before rather, where I would only date guys that were older than me. I was like, I refuse to date someone who's younger than me. But then his picture showed up for me, and I remember thinking, like, I really liked his name, and I thought he was cute. So I was like, mm, I'll give it a pass. And I remember just, like, liking it but then not thinking much of it. And we were recording pretty basic. This is like three years ago. And I we were ju- we finished recording. I looked at my phone and I had a message from a guy named Cal. And so we got it all on camera and I was like, oh my God, this guy messaged me. And we had like our first producer at the time. We were all talking about it. And I had like one of the prompts was like three things that you like. And I was like, dogs, Chance the Rapper, when he was good, and <laughs> um, and, pup, or, or, um, and tacos. And then he replied to that and was like, oh, dogs, puppy, or sorry, dogs, tacos, Chance the Rapper, three of my favorite things you sound like my dream girl and so then i was like oh he's cute but he's younger than me and How that was like my whole we... th- oh, he's a year younger than me but i like hated that cute, idea yeah. hated that idea <laughs> hated it Do you still think like when you're like in high school like oh he's like the grade below yes. yeah i sometimes think about people in grades and I stuff like patricia it. i'm like she would have been a freshman when i was a senior that that's wouldn't hot have worked though out. Yeah. i love that like i love that for her but like for me i was like ew it's like a senior dating a junior yeah, that's yeah. weird <laughs> we're that's still weird. stuck in that like high school I, mentality I know. yeah i know but it went and it worked out obviously we went on our first date and Where'd then you go? earth cafe and then went to like a bar arcade together daytime um daytime into nighttime okay and then we hooked up oh, oh <laughs> right on the first day right on the first day now did you two what? locations on the first date two locations and uh, i also thought i was never going to see him again i was why? like eh, i was didn't have any interest in like a relationship sometimes you have to like tell yourself that just to like i don't know oh, i remember sure. when i was dating like yeah Maybe I'll see that person again. I don't know. Because you don't want to get too invested too early on. Well, like more so for me, I was crazy when I was, before I met Cal. Every guy before Cal, no, you guys, I was insane. (laughs) We won't talk about it. (laughs) So just like creepy, creepy or like, there was a guy that I went on one date with and I was just, I was so new to dating. I was, I'm a very late bloomer. I didn't go on a first date until I was like 23. Yeah. So. How to uh, learn fast. Had, exactly. I had so much to catch up for. I had to be crazy. Mm-hmm. So um, I had like exhausted myself with every guy because I kept being like the first guy I'd meet on an app. I'd be like, we're getting married. Oh my God, this is like so exciting. <laughs> and then I'd go like full force. They'd obviously be terrified and then like completely blow me off, understandably so. Till finally when I had like went on the date before with another guy before Cal, 
I finally was like in the position where the guy liked me more and I was like, oh, I don't like this guy. Like it just finally went switched oh, for me. Yeah. And then after that, I was like, oh, I think I'm done dating. I'm just going to like actually take a break. Cal came into the picture and I was like, oh, I'm just going to hook up now. I'm going to have fun. Met Cal and then never saw someone again. Wow. I know. Did you, did Cal know who you were or are but no. like when he was expressing interest in you no i told him i was in marketing oh wow <laughs> yeah that's good and i like my thing when i was dating is i never wanted to talk about myself so i would only ask them questions about them because like i didn't want to bring up anything that i did it's like i found it embarrassing actually now i'm cool with it obviously but i remember cal said his the first thing or the biggest thing he took away from our, from our first date was like wow she like seems to really want to know me and asks a lot of questions about me like that's really cool did he ask enough back though no that's the thing i'll tell you Patricia and I, our first couple dates, didn't would never ask me a question. She wouldn't ask you. I, finally, she asked me one question at the end of a dinner, and I she go, goes, "What's your name again?" <laughs> 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 no, I. <laughs> but it, it, she, it was, but it was getting to a point where I was almost so annoyed she hadn't asked me anything that I ended up saying because I had already had like two or three drinks. I was like. Oh, you're gonna ask me a question? And she just went red. And I'm like, I'm really not that upset by it, but Aww. like you really haven't asked me anything. Which usually for most people would be like a red flag. Mm -hmm. But I could just tell that she was just kind of like nervous about me in general. Okay. So um also wasn't as interested in you as you were in her at the beginning. Th that is true. Oh. She did she was not. But no. then that like made you want to chase her, just like yes. Cal chased me. Exactly. Yeah. That's all. It's but that's a great tip to get someone to like you. Also, is asking them a bunch of questions about themselves. Yeah. People love talking about themselves. For sure. So by doing that, I think you secured the bag. I did it without even trying. There you go. I feel like also like Cal and probably Patricia just aren't naturally as inquisitive of people. You, like I feel like they, maybe they just don't really want to ask as yeah. many questions. Maybe I don't know. That's just like I guess the line of work that we're in. It's such like a socially focus thing and like people's personalities is who they are and we have to like I don't know exchange with that mm -hmm. um yeah but, I, I one time met people at a party these like three three girls and they said that they worked at a bank and then by the end of the night they were like we actually work for the daily show we're writers on the daily show but they oh. they don't like if they say that then like everybody just wants to talk to them and ask them a million questions and like so they say socially when they go out they just never talk about their job they just say they work at a bank and no one asks any more questions about their job <laughs> oh. that's a really good cop out that, maybe i should say that i should use that next time i'm in ubers and stuff whenever i get a chatty driver because oh, there's I like nothing that, worse than when you're talking to a stranger and they're like what do you do and then you explain that you're like this social media influencer you yeah. do a podcast then they're like oh my gosh well I'll my nephew yeah. is interested in <laughs> yes. that you should follow him yes. and i'll tell them and they're putting that just like virtual gun to your head I like know. going come on hook my nephew up and you're like listen i work at a bank <laughs> <laughs> Mike, summer is here, and there is nothing more than I love pairing my summer with a very good beer. And to take things to the next level, did you know that Zero Car Beer is here? I sure did, Matt. Bud Light Next. We are so excited to be one of the first podcasts to partner with the brand new Bud Light Next, their first Zero Carb Beer. You heard that right. Zero Carb Beer. It's super crisp, light beer with 80 calories and a 4% ABV. Bud Light Next tastes great. It's crisp, refreshing. People who have never had it before always love it after the first sip. We love it every weekend, anytime we're hanging out. It's always great to have around in the fridge. Have friends over, bring it to a party. You can't miss when you got Bud Light Next. And we had the coolest unboxing experience when they sent us Bud Light Next. Look at this box. You can It opens up, it slides out, and it was even presented like it's like a Super Bowl trophy. It lights up. Uh, this is hands down one of the best boxes I've ever received from a brand. And the beer is delicious. It's refreshing. It's super crisp. And we love it. And it has an unexpected amount of flavor for being zero carbs. I know everybody who I have offered it to and has tasted it, their first reaction is, wow. Even people who don't like beer end up liking Bud Light Next. That's how good it is. So if you don't believe us, go try Bud Light Next for yourself. It is in stores now. And if you want to find a retailer who delivers right to your door, go to Bud Light dot com slash next once again if you want to find a retailer who can deliver it straight to your door go to budlight.com slash next enjoy responsibly you must be 21 or older and now back to the episode did you have any uh, what was like your first job uh youtube youtube never straight had, up you well, never I had babysat like a bit but oh, <laughs> youtube do you still keep in touch with the kids you babysat um not quite. I mean, I check up on Facebook every once in a while, but I was not a good babysitter. Like, How so? I, um, I was 
in charge of this really adorable little kid. Her name, her name was Madeline. She was like Gerber baby adjacent. So cute. Um, and so I just like loved looking at her and like hanging out. But then as soon as she cried, I would just like stuff her full of snacks. Because I was like, maybe, you know, maybe, maybe this will stop it. I was probably like 13, 14 at the time. You give her a joint here. Smoke this. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> this will help. But I remember one time I called my best friend over who was a kindergarten teacher now does third grade but she's always been great with kids and she just kind of sat there watching me just like stuffing this baby with snacks also sometimes i get so hungry i would eat the baby snacks because i was just like really hungry and so she would just watch me and be like you are horrible with children like this this is not what you're <laughs> supposed to and then she would like coddle the baby help out do all these things and i was like oh i probably shouldn't be babysitting anymore right. i also drove kids to school for a little bit too Whoa. i just remembered that was about it though. just uh just picking up and dropping off yeah nice a little bit of a, like a school a bus or just just in my a... car okay okay i drive them like tennis practice and what I was your first home. car um mazda cx9 oh that's like the mom crossover car. suv one yeah yeah that's, like a mom car. that's what my my brother drives one I of those you got a range rover now though i do it's a beautiful car thank you <laughs> that's very nice of you to notice um oh i had a question you said that your grandma likes to scam people at a grocery store what what is your grandma doing at grocery stores no 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 people? she's not scamming people so she's in an assisted <laughs> living home but my grandma's like she and i are very similar we're very stubborn like she's like essentially exactly what i'm going to be when i'm older but she in COVID, obviously in this home they had to be extra careful because they're all elderly immune systems like everything was really scary but so they weren't allowed to leave unless they're oh my god i'm like always blowing up my grandma's spot no, i think she can't okay. speak english because she doesn't get it but she <laughs> poor thing if she knew um her doc or her like nurse is at the assisted living home like they're not allowed to let you out unless you're going to a doctor's appointment so she would tell them i'm going to the doctor and but really she would just go to the grocery store roam the aisles go to the casino play some some slots like she, she is me oh she, she have her own car and she just gets up and leaves yeah i don't think she's supposed to drive but my dad <laughs> always calls me he's like your grandma is just like doing this again so she just like would scam them and then go to the grocery store just like take a walk just do something and that's to get gonna out. be you in the future absolutely well my grandpa he's been getting in trouble a lot at his uh um, retirement facility. I don't even know if it's, you call it a retirement facility. It's just like elderly <laughs> care because um, he has uh, he's getting really bad dementia. He, uh, about like a few weeks ago, he dropped his pants like <gasps> purposefully, like to some like woman that or whatever. Happen. A little people, prankster. Old people just get naked and when they start to uh, lose it a little bit. Aww. Yeah, my grandpa also was like hooking up with another woman like in the <gasps> rec room and like I don't know she like his pants were off and she was feeling him. Oh my goodness! I know. Apparently, like STDs are rampant in I in retirement oh, communities yeah. and they have to like they're really trying to like crack down on it and they have to give like sex ed talks to yeah. these elderly Aww. people. Well, I mean, they're just they got nothing better to do and yeah. they're all past their childbearing age anyway so they're just like let her rip you know it's so strange that like our parents my parents now have to get calls like like it's almost <laughs> like your kids yeah, at school yes, got in college. trouble <laughs> and they have to like update you on like what they did today uh -huh. and i don't know do they have to, like sign off on it or <laughs> i don't know maybe it's just like with three strikes and you're out we're kicking you out but i think mm. i don't know i think they want them want the money anyway where would you want to retire do you see well i guess my question is yeah, do you see yourself continuing to live in LA? And is it also surprising that you found yourself in LA having grown up in Anaheim? Did you always think, oh, I'll just move to LA? Or did you have your eyes set somewhere else? That's a really good question. I think um, not really. I kind of just moved to LA because it, everyone was doing it on YouTube in that time. And it was yeah. like, well, I guess I'll just. Also, I was in Riverside, which, after your research, you know, there's absolutely nothing going on Besides there. Besides the big cup. Besides. Yeah. But I, you can only go to the big cup so many times. Right. It's only like, it doesn't really change much. So there wasn't much to do. And all of my friends in college also, well, I dropped out after my first year, but I lived there my second year because I had already had the lease on my house. So I was just living there, making videos. And then by the time my second year was up, all my friends were graduated. So I was like, I might as well leave. So I moved to LA just because of that. And then I think when Cal and I have kids... Well, probably, I want to go back to Orange County. He doesn't want to go back to Orange County. Right? Uh, I don't blame him. So, uh, I don't know where we're going to go. Yeah. I love Dallas, personally, but he's not Dallas? into that. Yes. 
Dallas, that's where I, yeah. I know. Yeah. I love Dallas. Like, I'm, I'm like, like I'm what, like, what, what, what? <laughs> Dallas? Like, I, I thought Dallas. I was, like, hearing things. Yes. Oh, wait, what made you fall in love with Dallas? My best, best friend from college, the one who graduated, did Teach for America. And oh. so she got put out in Dallas. And then during those years when I first moved to L.A., I didn't have very many friends. So I'd visit her all the time. Love it out there. Now she has her family. She has two kids. I'm like, I could totally do that. Yeah. Because I, I get pretty conflicted about where I see myself, like, in the future. I mean, it depends, like, if I want to stay in L.A., but L.A., you need, like, a lot of money to yeah. live, like, very comfortably out here. Mm -hmm. In Texas, <laughs> mansions are cheap, baby. <laughs> and, um, but I, I've i always talked with Patricia about that. Like, oh, if we really, you know, saw our lives, like, together in the future, she kind of, like, leans more towards Dallas than Birmingham, though I also like Birmingham, too. Um, but, yeah, Dallas, it would be nice. I love it. Well, yeah, we got to go out there for like a weekend or something. Birmingham's only like a hop, skip, and a jump away from Texas, right? Or like yeah, from Dallas? Yeah, just a few states away. But Birmingham, what's really nice is you have access to like beaches and two. So, yeah. Oh, yeah, there's nothing in Texas. Dallas, you're, yeah, you're pretty landlocked in Texas. There's lakes, though, I'm assuming? Yeah, there are lakes. Okay. But they're very like Texas lakes. But they're pretty. But I don't know. Sometimes, I, don't, I think I've just seen them all that I like. Lose a little bit of the allure. Especially after being out here, I'm sure. Would you ever go back to Jersey Mike? Jersey Mike's. <gasps> <laughs> oh, my God. Didn't even think A it. celebrity. Uh, I, I love New Jersey, but I think the weather in California is, like, truly probably the best weather in the world. Yeah. It's unbelievable. Every day is perfect. So, And in New Jersey, it just gets so cold. Like, it's unbearable for six, eight months out of the year. For that reason alone, I probably would not want to go back there. But, like, the mm. people there... I love if you ever look at the Wikipedia list of people who are from New Jersey, it's everybody. It's so like, many people are. You're right. Yeah. It's it's the most densely populated state in America. So more people per square mile than any other state. You're kidding. Yeah. I never knew that. Yeah, I didn't which, either. So it's, it's a really small state, but like so many people live there. Yeah. There's so It's also like a little America. There's like the really Republican rural side. There's like the right next to New York City, Hoboken, Jersey City yeah. side. There's farmland. There's South Jersey next to Philly. Like you kind of get a full picture of the American life growing up in New Jersey. So I think it's a great place to grow up. And to visit, but like I would definitely like living in California. What part specifically are you from? I'm from literally in the center of the state. So ah. I'm I was like Freehold. Yeah, Freehold, Manalapin, Marlboro area. Okay. Yeah. Wow, I didn't know that at all. New Jersey is amazing. Yeah. Um, you have a little bit of a green thumb. You got quite a garden in that backyard of yours. Thank you so much. Uh, um it, I didn't know I did because I usually kill every plant. Yeah. But it's also it's kinda hard to kill a garden because all you have to do is water it. It's yeah. like not too hard. Do you have it like auto, like automated like no, at all? I'm no, I'm physically you just go out, out there, there just manually wow. watering it. What plant are you very proud of that you're growing? Ooh, I have an ice cream mango tree that's coming in pretty nicely. What is that? It's like a sp I don't, I've never tried it, but it's a special species of mango that I'm growing, and it seems to be doing pretty well. And then I have a peach tree that's also I just started it like last year. <gasps> it's um grafted. It's called a cocktail tree, which they can do with like apples, pretty much any like type of like stone fruit, but they can graft it so. So my peach tree has four different types of peaches on one tree. She's talking grafting. Grafting. You can do an apple tree, so you can have like Granny Smith, Fuji on one branch. You're growing like different weed strains exactly. out there. Exactly. I know. I, that's really impressive. Thank you. Do you smoke weed? I do sometimes, but I get really anxious. Like you would never come on unfiltered like Alicia did and do a little Patreon high episode. I could do it. You could do it. You yeah. could hang. But I just would <laughs> rather drink like three cans and be like good. Three cans of like. The weed drink? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Honestly, like, what? I'm like this. So we'll see. But I'm down. <laughs> I'm, like, not against it. But then I, I have this weird... Like, my anxiety festers with being... Or feeling like I'm trapped. So I get claustrophobic. Or, like, if I am if I have too much weed, I'm like, <gasps> I'm dying and I'm trapped in my own body. Right. I'm apologizing for just everything. Yeah. Like, I'm just like, I'm sorry. Did I, am I talking too much? Or Aww. did I... Did I um, I, I I don't know. I get a little insecure. That's do you so kind. I'm above the influence, guys. I don't do drugs. Okay. <laughs> you have smoked weed, though, right? Dare. Uh, those records are permanently sealed. <laughs> you don't even like admit that you've smoked weed. Let's move on. <laughs> my dad's a huge stoner, and really? I didn't. My dad's a huge stoner. I had no idea all my life. Oh, so he was keeping it from you? Oh yeah, all the time. My dad's now been like consuming weed Just and stuff like or he was out here he was like i gotta get some gummies i want to get some mints <laughs> no they love it my friend's mom is growing marijuana in her garden like they all like love it 
They grow marijuana yeah. in the garden. Wow. Yeah, she's growing it. She yeah. just gives it to him. Or was it a big deal when you found out that your dad? No, I was just like, eh, it makes sense. He's always like really chill, just like hanging out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they finally clicked for me, I think. Um. Okay. Okay. So I'm gonna have some just like random questions here. Okay. That like I didn't organize very well. What is the song and dance team? You were on the song and Where did dance. you find that information? I Famous think I heard birthdays? it on a, like, you talking about it with Alicia. Oh, well, it's basically, well, there was the dance team, and then song is kind of like cheer, but instead of doing stunts, you're doing dance moves. So, like, like the Laker girl or Laker girls, is that what they are? Oh, it's like that. okay, like a, like a drill team? Similar. You have pom-poms, but you're just doing, like, dance routines, like, we would do it with the cheer team. So it's like they play a song, they're doing stunts, and we're doing a dance routine. To a song. Side by side, exactly. Oh, I thought you were like dancing and singing. Oh, no. Oh, I wish. I wish. No, I'm not a singer. No, no. Not. But uh, you can dance. Mm. I was very impressed by some of like your like older TikToks that I saw. Oh, wow. Thank you so much. Or, like the top liked one. I, I, I was like, wow. Wow, really? Thank mm-hmm. you so much. I was very, very mediocre on the dance team. Oh. I was I was never good. Do so, you like a go-to you. move? But are you like a fun like casual dancer if you go out to like a, a dance floor or a oh. wedding or Do you anything? have your go-to moves? I would say, yeah, it's just like a lot of like hip rolling. A lot of like <laughs> eyes closed, hip rolling. Yeah. That's what it seems to be. I finally just learned how to do the... Uh, <gasps> the, I can't do that. Oh, it took me like a month, like, and now I got it down. It's like it's patting like your head exactly, yeah. and rubbing your tummy. It's hard. But I, I'm, I'm very proud of that one. That's my new go-to. You used that's to impressive. do the, the in and oh, out one, like my oh, like I love soft that dance. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's that's a good one. And I always get like a lot of like woo because you can inter- you can intersperse <laughs> that into like you just kind of be snapping your fingers and then bust into that. And, and I then... can moonwalk very well. These are good moves. Mm-hmm. My yeah. God, I'm very proud about my. Matt can tear up a dance floor. I, What's your I go-to? See that. I don't. I can't the white dance. guy overbite, just like. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that's what it's called. Oh, I love that though. <laughs> Do you maybe you yeah, you uh, dance. I like dance with I, you. I, I think it's like very basic, just you know, a little just side move, to side just swaying. Snapping your fingers. Okay. Uh, like nineteen fifties, you know, s- swaying and moving. I've never taken a dance lesson. Really? I one time had to learn how to do a dance for someone's wedding. He wanted to like surprise his wife. <laughs> Cute. Like with like a whole trio of we were doing like a dance from Fiddler on the Roof or something. It was so <laughs> It was so difficult. I I don't understand. If how. I was on it, <laughs> yeah, it was kind of we were doing like a lot of this stuff. Uh-huh. And like, wow! But like learning dance routines is such a it is so much mental energy to like do. I, it looks easy when you see someone. Oh, I can do that, and then you try and redo it, and you just feel like like a baby lamb trying to walk. And I it's not for me. Not my forte. It's like you either get it or you don't. And some yeah, people are just born it. with it. I get that. You you're born with like the natural. Like Zane also just has this natural like he can just move his body. Zane is it, I think was a dancer in his past life. <laughs> really? It is unbelievable. It's no crazy. Way. And he can <gasps> sing too. No way. But he like jokingly sings like he'll like hit notes and then he'll like goof out of it. But I'm like you're on that note, buddy. Keep it going. Oh man. Yeah. But you you like you both have that like natural rhythm where you can just like hear a song and you don't you don't look like you know, an awkward teenager on the dance floor like I do. I but. wish I could really vibe though, like really get into it. I think it. you could if you put your mind to it. I think you could. I think so. <laughs> um, okay, you don't have to go too big into this. I just think it's interesting, and I never really heard you talk about it. Did Ooh. you witness the Will Smith slap? I did with your own eyes. Yes, with my own eyes. I mean, I was in the nosebleeds, but yes, I did. Did yeah. you hear it? Uh, yeah, I heard. It was like it echoed through the theater. I kid you not. Like, I I remember. I was, like, paying attention, but kind of not. Also, I was so far. I couldn't really see a ton going on. But, obviously, it got quiet. And I remember being like, oh, shit, what's going on? I look over. And you just see, like, a figure walking up. I, I couldn't tell what was going on. I just was like, who is that? And then, all of a sudden, you just hear, Whoosh! And then the whole theater went silent. And everyone was just like, oh! And then he went and sat down. Obviously, he yelled, so I could hear him yelling. And then... After that, the whole rest of the show, everyone was just in like pure pandemonium, like trying to figure out was it fake, was it real, was it fake, was it real. The whole time, no one paid attention to anything else. The whole rest of the show, it was insane. Yeah, I thought it was a bit at first. I did too. And then you hear the clip and the way he like blinks after he's like, "Keep my wife's name yes. out your mouth." Who? It was the crazy. vibe of the room changed. Oh, complete. like the entire place. The entire. I don't know how many people it fit. Probably like a few thousand or so. Yeah, a couple thousand. I don't even know. Silent. 
the whole room went silent and i remember i thought that it was a bit too but i looked at cal and cal was like there's no way they'd let him cuss on national television if it right. was a bit so he's like no that it had to be real it had to be real and then i checked my phone and i had like 30 people texting me like what happened <laughs> lauren was like at a viewing show but i guess they like they made it the screen go black for a second or something on live tv so it was crazy that i got to see it in person and it was just the most insane thing that i've ever seen happen i bet it was life. just the talk of the night after did you go to an after party I and that's did. everybody everyone was just just chatting about it it was so weird wow and he went to the after party and like everything was fine and dandy it was really it was odd i felt so bad for chris rock yeah I felt so bad yeah i know i heard he doesn't like talk about it now like in his uh, he hasn't yet i, I mean i you don't want that to define your career as yeah. a stand-up you got to just brush past it and move on did well, you see the Chappelle thing though he went up on stage at Chappelle's thing oh yeah did yeah, yeah. <laughs> was that, that was like Smith? the perfect yeah, thing way to yeah. do it <laughs> <laughs> i just think it's really cool that you witnessed it and you can just say years from now like i saw the slap it's like being it. there for the kennedy assassination uh, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah on a different scale but sure sure in terms of things people talk about, I don't know. Hey, I can't believe how much I almost I got like sick of hearing about it though after a couple yeah, days. I was yeah. like, okay, let's move on. Um, so I have another question. Okay. Um, I'm going I'm going to uh, New York City uh, soon in like a few weeks next month. Um, and I heard that you recommended to Alicia a place called Sushi Nakazawa. Yes. And you got her the reservation. Is that because you have like strings to pull there or oh, what? No, Alicia's just not very good at booking things. So <laughs> oh. I act as her secretary. I booked her COVID vaccine. I booked her reservation for dinner. Like, I just know, like, if I do it, it'll happen sooner. So I do that for her. Okay. So what type <laughs> of sushi do I need to be ordering at this restaurant? Oh, what it's makes omakase. it so special? It's omakase. Which is? Like, so they, I think it translates into, like, we choose for you or let us choose something along those lines where it's like, you don't get to pick. The chef prepares it for you. Exactly. Oh. And they so give they it to you, like, in, like, one at a time, right? They'll give you, like, the first and then yes. the second and the third. Will they at least tell me what it is? Yeah, they, they tell, tell you. you. But the only thing, so I love sushi so much. But then the sushi that I eat is, like the same three or four fish over and over again. Yeah. I know what I like. Your salmon, yeah. your tuna. The basics. Yeah. But with this restaurant, so there's um, a, a sushi chef who's like the most famous sushi chef of all time. His name's Jiro, I believe. Yes. Jiro yeah, Dreams. Sushi Dreams of, yes. Yeah. So he, the guy, Nakazawa, was like his protege. Oh. So yeah, that's why it was like a big deal. So when he, he came to New York, opened it up with like a restaurateur, and um, they just basically like, it's amazing. And they like have the full fish in front of you. Everything's like flown in from Japan and they make it for you, but you can't choose there's obviously. no substitution exactly it's very like very simple and so there were a couple that count i were like chewing like like just trying to swallow but it was a, and you're eating it right in choice. front of the guy right exactly. so you can't just be like oh what is that exactly you have to, you have to respect it how yeah. much is this i think it was like 500 dollars a person Ooh, i a know person? i know maybe not i know it's but a very then, big thing in new york though like omakase is like all the finance people like that's if you want to go on a date with like a rich bro they'll take you to omakase because it's very in new york it's like the high high society type. for sure for sure i even did like a video where alicia and i swapped credit cards so from there then we like just book fun things and do fun things and so i hired a private sushi chef that i found on yelp to come to my house and so he was preparing things and cal and i were talking about nakazawa that experience versus like this guy and how they were both so great and the sushi chef was so cute and he was like oh, you've been to nakazawa like he was so adorable about it so it's like a very prestige thing Ooh. amazing i gotta check it out i recommend it um what tiktok audio is stuck in your head <gasps> Perfect, 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 perfect. That's my favorite right now. <laughs> I like that. Call me La Cuifa. Yes, like yes. What? Um, what the fuck? What is it? Um, La Cuifa. What? what? Yes. Yeah, me yeah. Too. That one stuck in my head. You got one stuck oh, in you your head? you guys heard this one that I know I fucked up. I'm just still... Like the very first song that I Oh my came god. Out. That's the so I'm kidding. I'm so nervous for you for a second. <laughs> it's a joke. It's a I joke. I don't even think... <laughs> that was good. That was a good question. Okay, Come sorry. <laughs> um... A TikTok that's stuck in my head right now. Like an audio. I where... like that British guy doing the rap. Whoever put that oh, together. Oh, money is... don't jiggle, jiggle. It's so good. I we, love it. It was, uh, we did this funny challenge on Unfiltered uh, earlier this week. And Jordan, uh, the new assistant, we he played um, a sentence in different languages on like <gasps> Google Translate. And we had to like listen to identify what language it was. Very cool. So it was it was really cool because we would like they would play Portuguese and we we're like, okay, that's like Spanish, but it sounds like French, it's Portuguese. And then they did uh um uh Hebrew. Oh. <gasps> and and we but and then they did Mandarin Chinese, which I like know like a, a handful about, but I was listening to it and I'm like, I 
I was trying to translate it, but I'm like, this is a really weird sentence. I couldn't figure out what the sentence was. And then we listened to it in all these different languages. And then by the end, we were like, what is it in English? And he plays it. And it's like, my money don't jingle jingle. Wow. It folds. That's what great. a good idea. Yeah. That's a great concept. Yeah, yeah. But it was just so fun. Like, I was actually curious if I could, well, if I played that sentence in Korean. Wait, you speak Korean. No, right? I don't speak. Oh. I know. I'm, I'm Never really learned. not Korean. No. no, no All my yet. cousins went to Korean school. My mom... She was like, no, you don't have to go. But now I wish I did because it's so cool. Well, good. I'm, glad, I'm glad I didn't assume. Oh. <laughs> like, just been like, hey, <laughs> what, what is this? Hey, Remy. Did you ever do Taekwondo growing up? I did not. Why would you no. say that? It's the Korean martial arts. Oh, oh, my dad for... did, though. My dad was a black belt. Sorry, I, I did it for 13 years. I know Korean from going to Taekwondo. <laughs> yes, exactly. That's all I know. Yeah. What, what else do you know? Annyeonghaseyo, uh, which is yes. hello. Um, yes. Which is thank you. I know how to count to 10. Let's hear it. I don't remember exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, I don't want to. I don't want to. I haven't practiced in a while, but I know a little bit. It's, Very uh, impressive. Yeah. Uh, what's your favorite kind of soup? Oh, I heard you I like soup, soup any time of day. I love soup. I would say a good. I love a clam chowder. Oh, I had clam chowder, clam chowder. Um, on Sunday. Wow. Yeah, I had it at Connie and, <laughs> Connie and Ted's New England clam chowder. That sounds very they good. Even have, they, have a, they, have a, they have a chowder like sampler too. You get three <gasps> like different a flight? types. Yes, a flight mm. of chowder, Connie and Ted's. Where's that? It's over in like West Hollywood, right off. Um, is it? That's on Sunset. Is it Sunset? Santa Monica Boulevard. Okay, I'll be there. Yeah. I would say undefeated is tomato soup grilled cheese combo. Oh. Oh, yeah. That's oh, yeah. an undefeated combination. Yeah. Pretty good. Did you ever watch Inside the Actor's Studio? Are you familiar with that show? No. It was like big decades back. Um, and this guy would ask actors to come on and at the end he would have these famous 10 questions Ooh. so they're just they're they're really kind of like um easy questions and um okay. i don't know we've been making it a little bit of a, a tradition on here okay so give me one Mike second just to pull it up the first half and i'll ask the second half we'll be right back after a quick word from today's sponsor squarespace squarespace is an all-in-one platform for building your brand and growing your business online stand out with a beautiful website engage your audience and sell anything your product content you create and even your time squarespace makes it super easy for creators to monetize their content and expertise in a way that fits their brand with member areas you can unlock new revenue streams for your business and free up time in your schedule by selling access to gated content like videos, online courses, or newsletters. They also have a video studio where you can create pro-level videos effortlessly. The Squarespace Video Studio app helps you make and share engaging videos to tell your story grow your audience and drive sales. Also stand out in any email inbox with Squarespace email campaigns. You can collect email subscribers and convert them into loyal customers. Start with an email template, customize it by applying your brand ingredients like your site color and logo. And they also have built-in analytics to measure the impact of every email you send. That's right, you can use analytics to grow your business. You can learn where your site visits and sales are coming from, and you can analyze which channels are the most effective. So improve your website and build a marketing strategy based on your top keywords or most popular products and content. So head on over to squarespace.com slash hoot for a free trial when you're ready to launch. And that's offer code hoot, H-O-O-T, to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Once again, go to squarespace.com slash hoot and use the code hoot for 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. And now back to the episode. So yeah, these are ten questions that they would just ask at the end of this interview show. Okay. Um, answer. Take as much time as you need, or as quickly as you want. Uh, first question: What is your favorite word? <gasps> Bliss. Bliss. I love that word. It's not used enough. I need to bring that back. Right. Do, do you use it in your vocabulary, no. or you just like the concept and the idea? I like the idea. I like the way it rolls off the tongue. I gotta use it more often. Maybe blissful. I feel mm -hmm. like that's a little bit easier to use. Okay. Mm -hmm. Very. That's a good one. That's a word we haven't heard yet. Ooh. Uh, what is your least favorite word? Pussy. Ugh. I'm sorry. Yeah, I know no. pussy for like moist, but I just hate it. I hate writing it. I hate talking about it. Yeah, pussy. It's yeah. It's not the best word that like it gives me dick like and sweats. cock have. <laughs> it doesn't yeah. roll off the yeah. tongue quite as nicely. Um, okay. What turns you on? <gasps> when Cal puts his clothes in the hamper. <laughs> <laughs> oh, domestic housework. Yeah, he just did it. Out. Yeah. Good job. Um, what turns you off? 
And when Cal doesn't put his clothes <laughs> in the hamper. Okay, it's a very binary <laughs> example here. Uh, what sound or noise do you love? Cal's clothes hitting the hamper. <laughs> <laughs> I would have to say just the ocean, waves oh. crashing. Oh, yeah. I've been falling asleep to like waves crashing. Are you a sound machine guy? I, I do brown noise and um, ocean sounds. Oh. But I, I'm very particular about the ocean sound. It needs to sound like I'm inside hearing the ocean. Not Some, on the not beach. Not outside, like on, on the, the beach. beach. Okay. Yeah, because then that's like anxiety inducing. You're like, is, am I going to get crushed drown? by a yeah. wave? Yeah. And it makes me want to pee. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, I'm. Like, I have to sleep in full silence. I can't do a sound machine. What? I need absolute silence. Oh, I'm yeah, complete. Op- Patricia got me into sound machines, and People I've never it. gone back. Mm. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think I can sleep. The only thing I can't sleep is if there's like a consistent noise, like someone snoring. Ugh, I can't sleep, or like if like it. there's a water dripping. I can't sleep. Okay. I'll put then I'll put a white noise machine over top of that. But I could sleep in silence, not silence. Um, do you fall asleep listening to anything? Cal snoring. <laughs> but Horrible. you don't put on like a like a meditation or like a show that you like to fall no. asleep to? But I should, honestly, because I take no, at least shouldn't. an hour to fall asleep. Don't, really? I, I started when I was younger, like listening to like a TV show, and now uh. I can't sleep unless there's something playing. Oh. And it's like a lullaby that puts me to sleep. And okay. I'll like set a timer. It's bad. What's your show? Uh, it used to be Seinfeld. Okay. And then I they wore that out. So now, I, now I'll usually put on just like a compilation of like David Letterman cool. clips and just like fall asleep. I've been that. worried about like blue light though on like my TV before I go to bed. I, do I on wish my phone. there was like a night mode for TVs where they could just change it. I put it bit. on my phone. That's how I and then oh. I, then I set a timer oh. and you can set a timer on your phone to just stop playing whatever you're playing. That's so like after really I just smart. put it for 15 minutes and then I'll put on like you know or I'll put on ocean sounds and then after 15 minutes it just turns off. Whoa, genius! Another thing I I don't know if this is true. I think I saw it on TikTok, but like bird sounds of like birds chirping. Hate birds. Really? Fucking hate birds. Oh. Like the sound of like a bird. Like that a makes me nice... feel like it's the morning like, though. If I'm hearing. No, birds. birds are the vermin of the sky. I hate birds. <laughs> I hate birds. Are you into the birds aren't real conspiracy? What is that? Do you know about this? Oh, all the birds were killed in 1976 with Reagan replacing them with spies. (laughs) The birds work for the bourgeoisie. It's uh, it's like an internet meme that all the birds were killed by the government and they're all just drones in the sky and they're not real. You've never heard that? No, but I don't don't believe it. I feel like I hear about that every week. It's it's just like an internet nerd meme thing, but maybe you would... Subscribe to this ideology. Birds aren't real. I just don't like birds in general. I wish they weren't real. (laughs) I wish they didn't exist. Not even a parrot? Nope. A toucan? Nope. A, a beautiful blue breasted did you, did you see hummingbird? No. Nope. Did you see all those birds in Mexico when they were all on that electrical wire and they all fall dead? <laughs> yes. Disgusting. I was like, how did that happen? Oh, I think because it was like too much weight on it and like it just oh. short circuited and killed all of them. Did like, you see that? Like it's sad. I don't want them to die. Right. I just, you wish just don't they want them here. Well, oh. what I was going to say is I read that if you were ever anxious and you play the sound of birds chirping, it like naturally makes you less anxious because birds only chirp when they're in a safe environment without predators. Oh, that's and cute. so if you hear birds <laughs> chirping, that means that like it's a safe anyway. Okay. Moving on. That's actually adorable. Uh, the last question I'll be asking is what sound or noise do you hate? <laughs> birds chirping or my dogs barking? <laughs> okay. One or the other. And Matt, you're gonna take All right, from, and then which I think it's number two? six or number seven. Six. Oh number seven. What is your favorite curse word? Fuck. <laughs> Probably fuck. <laughs> that's been Probably I think, fuck. <laughs> that's been the favorite fuck has been the favorite it's, always, it's just so satisfying uh what profession other than your own would you like to attempt marine biology yes i love love that was like always my go-to in like elementary school yes, is right? i want to be a marine biologist i wanted to be a vet until i found out that they don't just play with the animals they like do other things that was like the worst day of my life i used to be obsessed with aaron carter when i was younger and aaron carter talked about how he <laughs> likes marine biology so i liked marine biology <laughs> because of aaron uh-huh. could you ever study anything like take a class or i haven't but i watch a lot of planet earth i love an animal animal documentary that's kind of all i really oh, yeah. study um next question is what profession would you not like to do <gasps> mm, well i went into college thinking i was going into the medical field of some sort now i don't know how blood makes me squeamish i don't know what i was thinking <laughs> i truly do i wasn't thinking so i think probably Something along those lines. Yeah, I wanted to be an optometrist for the longest time because I thought that must be a pretty clean job. Just like yeah. one or two, three or four. Oh, that's actually. Here are well, your glasses. I take that back. I think an ophthalmologist or an optometrist for me because 
eyeballs make me so squeamish oh it's eyeballs like eyeball, do. you know everyone has that one thing eyeballs i can't like even the word makes me want to throw up do right you wear now. contacts i do you do horrible like it took me like three hours they left me at the optometrist my mom did you know when they were like teaching you how to put yeah. them in oh horrible yeah that horrible. first time is because it feels like you have the still the feels like you have an eyelash on your eye when you first put contacts oh, on yeah you should and get I have, lasik i can't because i'm so scared of eyeballs i'm but like you don't have to touch your eye anymore but i also you don't convinced have to myself i'm gonna be the one that goes blind oh, oh. that's why like, i'm not getting it either and mike wants I'm to just so get sh- one done to see yeah. how it does <laughs> do, well, yeah, Actually, do one at a time and then you only have to buy half the amount of contacts you wear contacts <laughs> well <laughs> my, my, my theory would be is i do the first one okay make sure it heals and it's not blind okay and then i do the other one so at least if the <gasps> second 50, one goes wrong yeah but but i would get it both i would get both sides done but just not at the same time wait i kind of love because if your doctor having an off day or the machine's not calibrated right and they just burn both and you're just like uh so here's how it's going to be like i just no i know dr paul lee is the best i know in and LA. this guy in did LA. like three of three of our friends and they all after he did mine like oh, three you did it too? Uh, oh yeah i know everyone says it's the best thing they've ever done it's i just think like, about it every day really because mm-hmm. i'm I still think I, I always think about i need to take my contacts out i'm like no wait <gasps> i don't i can just go to bed <sighs> Okay. You skip. Oh, I'm well, not doing it think. still, but you know, right. I'm a little closer. If heaven exists, what would you like to hear God say when you arrive at the pearly gates? Whoa. I don't know. What do people normally say? Well, this is your question. This is your question. I know. It can be funny. It can I don't be think silly. I want him to just say like... anything. I just more so want to know. Like, I'm so curious about like a few cases of like what really happened. Maybe he could tell me. Yeah. Like, what happened to John Paul? There we John go. Paul Bonet. Tell me. <laughs> yeah. What happened to him? John, isn't that her name? John, John Paul? Benet Ramsey. John, John, John Paul? Paul? <laughs> like the like the Pope? Or like, what happened to John, John Paul? John Benet Ramsey. John Benet Ramsey. <laughs> I want to know what happened to John Benet Ramsey. I, I'm very similar to like that type of question when people ask like, who would you want to have at your dinner, living or dead? Yeah. Like, I always want, um, yeah, somebody who was murdered. Wait, is it John or Joan? Joan, 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 John, Benet, John Benet Ramsey. John Benet Ramsey, not John, John Paul. Well, it's J-O-N with like a French accent above the O, oh, I, I th- think. I thought it was Joan, like a girl. I think, I think it's it can John. be pronounced like both ways. John Benet, Joan Benet. I don't even know what it is. I know, I've just John, it's actually John. Was it a murder case? I just want to know. Yeah, the little girl. They who was the girl's name? John, John Benet, Benet Ramsey. Oh, the girl's name is yeah. John. She was like a... F- Probably like five years old, little like pageant girl. Yep. And then they found her. Did they? They found her murdered. Correct. They, they found her murdered in their house. Yes. The parents. It was the night of Christmas, not like Christmas Eve. The night of Christmas. Oh. Um. And yeah, they they said that she was missing, and then the parents did. The parents did, but they had the daughter was really in the basement, bound. And, um, Did the parents dead. get in jail? Uh, the, no, the, they no got away with it. The mom's in. dead. She died of cancer, and the dad, I'm pretty sure, is married to oh. one of like the lawyers on like Ooh. another child case. Very bizarre. And the brother, who I think did it, I, that's the big conspiracy. He's yeah. our age and is just out and about living his life. Are they Amer- Is it an American story? It happened in Colorado. Mm-hmm. Wow, I've never heard of. I don't know the story. I've just heard the I name. I feel like if you saw the photo, yeah, yeah I think yeah. you would recognize it. Wow. Is, it's it's one of the most obvious cases, though. I think of somebody lying, like especially when you look at the ransom note. It has yes. this like really weird language that you can tell was like possibly written by a woman. Oh. Like, listen carefully, John. We represent a small foreign faction of people who do not particularly like you. <gasps> like, I, like. And what's weird is I don't get why somebody would abduct a child the night of Christmas when everybody's home. And also put her back in the house. That's the thing, yeah. too. So but, you so think the that parents, the parents covered up for the, the kid the did it. They were like, shit, we don't want to lose both of our kids tonight, uh, so we're going to cover this up. How old was the brother? A few uh, years older, right? Like she eight. was like four and he was like six. Also, maybe. like, oh, um, he had a history of being really violent. Oh to my her, goodness. like just like yeah. So there, I'm sure there's like documentaries about this I can watch oh, and catch up yeah. on. Yeah, yeah. man, well, go down that whole rabbit hole. What other cases do you want to know about? Ooh, I feel like all the ones that happen on cruise ships, I'm always keeping up with. Like people who jump off cruise ships, or like people will go missing on cruise ships, or like newly married couples will go on their honeymoon, and then like things will happen on the cruise ship. That happens a lot. Yeah, I'm trying to think of a specific case again. I don't know. Making a did you ever watch Making a Murderer? No, I don't like like horror stuff. Actually, it's not that bad. Okay. It's, a, it's an interesting murder case that happened out in I'm pretty sure Minnesota or Wisconsin um, of just this photographer who showed up at this family um, junkyard and got murdered. <gasps> and still to this day, they think the guy didn't do it. 
Oh. It's really more complex than that for the people who do know. I'm sorry I'm not giving the full picture. But we'll be here all day if we do that. <laughs> um, thank you so much for coming on, Remy. Thank you for having me. Do you have anything you want to plug? Anything that you're working on that you want to share with the people? Where can they find you? Um, I have two YouTube channels. Miss Remy Ashton and Rem Life. Podcast is pretty basic. Follow me on Instagram. That's it. All right. Oh, and TikTok, please. <laughs> Good. Well, thank you so much for coming on. Thank we you. Gotta we got to hang out. We got to do a double date. I know we always like joke about it and talk about it but we need to make it happen did you watch everything everywhere, everywhere all, all at once, once. Did you, you know watch what it? i went to the theater by myself and Cal I was, went by himself <laughs> but i was really kind of hung over and um i thought that i was gonna like sit through the whole thing and then like 20 minutes in i caught myself falling asleep <gasps> and i realized i was by myself it was a matinee i wasn't gonna lose that much money and i walked out wow. because i wanted to really enjoy it and i didn't want to be fighting uh, my attention span. Okay. So I need to see we it. We could double date. I get a text from like somebody every day asking like, did you see this? I feel like you'd love it. I know I'd love it. I just need the right time to see it. Just gotta make the time. All right. All right. Cool. <laughs> Bye guys. Bye. Have a great week. <laughs>